Good afternoon to our audience. My name is Kevin Pecker. I'm the Account Director for Sun Corporate Baron, and I'm delighted to provide today's introduction. I'd like to begin by firstly acknowledging the original custodians of Australia and pay our respects to the elders past, present and future, for they hold the memories, the traditions, the culture and the hopes of Indigenous Australia. Over the past few weeks with its Vax Pop series, Let's Get On With The Jab, the Trans-Tasman Business Circle has been spotlighting top Australian and New Zealand business leaders supporting the vaccine rollout. And today, Verant is proud to be partnering with that program. In the Vax Pop today, the Circle and Verant are delighted to hear from Steve Johnston, Group Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director of Suncorp. Thank you for joining us, Steve. Together, Verant and Suncorp share an obsession for delivering exceptional experiences to customers, employees, and the wider community. As we continue to emerge from the pandemic, it's clear that for us to once again enjoy so many of our previous experiences, the more people that get back, the better we will all be. Steve joined Suncorp in 2006 and has held various executive positions. He has played a key role in the strategic and financial management of the group, including Suncorp's rebuild following the group financial crisis. Prior to his current appointment, Steve was the group chief financial officer with responsibility for financial reporting and management, legal and company secretariat, taxation, investor relations, corporate affairs, and sustainability. A reminder that today's discussion is on the record, and we welcome our attending media guests. A recording will be shared to the Trans Tasman Business Circle YouTube channel following the event, and feel free to share your thoughts with the series hashtag VaxPop. I will now pass over to our moderator for today, Circle, uh, from Circle, Cerise Debeau, to get the conversation started. Thanks. Thank you so much, Kevin, for such a warm introduction, and thank you to Variant for being part of today's discussion. Steve, welcome, or welcome back, should I say, to the circle. It's really good to see you, and thank you for taking the time to be with us. Thanks, Cerise. We only have 20 minutes together, so I think we should just get started. And let's start with you. How are you, and how have you been? I'm very good, thank you. Um, I just, my um, disclaimer at the minute is that it might look like I'm sitting in the bar at home uh, or in the pool room. I'm actually uh, working at the um, the Shannon's facility at Eagle Farm, which is just outside the CBD of Brisbane. The reason being we're moving between our head offices. So I'm located out here for a couple of months and behind me is the auction room. So there's some very, uh, very exotic and very expensive vehicles that will be auctioned in a couple of weeks time. So that's that's where I am. It's great to be out of the CBD, great to work outside the CBD and great to be amongst uh, the great team at Shannon's for, for a little while, just uh, understanding the business and uh, and, and working out of these uh, great facilities here. Can we just have a little tour after this session so we can see all these cars? <laughs> uh, well, there's a GTHO phase three Falcon out there, which we expect will go somewhere around a million dollars or above. So there's some really expensive material. Well, then maybe we can have a little peek after the session. A lot has changed for you and for many of us, um, and mostly since we started this series back in September with Alan Joyce feels like just a lifetime ago already. Could you please share with us how COVID-19 has affected your organization and indeed the world insurance industry and why you felt the need to support the vaccine rollout in its early stages and be that strong voice as an advocate? Yeah, look, I think um, the whole COVID experience has been a unique one for many of us. And uh, I've been in the job now for two years. Uh, no sooner had I been offered the role and stepped into the role. The bushfires were the first uh, hurdle that we faced and many of our customers faced. And no, no sooner that the, the fires had gone out, then the first signs of the pandemic emerged. And I don't know about other CEOs, but I didn't see a handbook sitting in the office anywhere. This is how you deal with the pandemic. So uh, a lot of it is learning on the job. A lot of it learning how to, to think about how we should manage our business through the pandemic. And we set ourselves five principles right up front. Uh, firstly, we want to make sure our team was healthy and kept them healthy. Our customers needed our support, so we needed to be able to answer the phones, et cetera, et cetera. And we need to make sure that our balance sheet, our funding and our finances were all strong. And we needed to communicate with our team regularly. And uh, we needed to put ourselves in a position where uh, following COVID, we emerged as a stronger business and took the opportunity to reposition our business through, through COVID. And, uh, and they're the five principles that we've applied all the way through. And certainly when it comes to vaccinations, uh, again, we've got been guided by those principles. So vaccinations, we believe, are important to keep our team safe, keep our colleagues safe, keep our family safe, keep our friends safe. 
uh, but also important for our customers because we know that our customers, uh, and we do interact with customers directly, uh, whether it be in our bank branches, uh, our shop fronts, or as assessors and builders, our panel, panel builders especially. So a lot of people build, um, involved directly with our customers and we have a responsibility to keep them safe as well. So uh, our support and advocacy for the vaccination program, uh, which is multifaceted, is grounded in those sort of five principles that we applied right back at the start of COVID and we followed them um, ruthlessly all the way through. So that is how you encourage your work employees to get vaccinated through those, like, keep everybody safe? Yeah, um, a priority one was to keep everyone safe. And uh, as the vaccination program started to roll out, firstly, there's a communication piece. And uh, I think one of the key things that we did right up front was uh, make sure that our board, our chairman, um, and all of our executives are right at the front of the queue uh, because uh, we had to lead and lead by example. So um, many of us were right up front in terms of the vaccination program. We made sure that our team knew that we were doing that. Uh, and then we provided as much encouragement, as much information, as much direct support to our team to be able to do it, whether that be a couple of hours off during the work hours where it was convenient for them to get vaccinated. So we have had a very strong uh, encouragement for our team and we've uh, you know, phased that into, into different uh, categories of support over time. And we've put our brands behind this campaign. I, many of you will have seen the Amy ads that have been there, the Rhonda and Katoot re-emergence after almost 10 years uh, in our advertising campaign supporting uh, Vax Up Australia. So, you know, we, our, our support for vaccination has been multifaceted across the business. Where does Suncorp stand um, on mandatory vaccination for your employees? Well, certainly we're in the middle of con uh, consultation process with our team. So the first phase of our consideration of, of uh, vaccination support for our team members to be to identify those people who are at the front line of our business, customer facing members of our team, as I mentioned, bank branches, stores, assessors, and people that are gonna be traveling regularly in their, in their job roles. And we have around 13,000 team members across, the, uh, across Australia and New Zealand. Around 2,000 of them form, form that first cohort. And uh, we have uh, told our team, and our expectation is that there'll be mandatory vaccinations for that group of people as a starting point. Uh, we're in the middle of consultation around that at the moment. We expect to have that concluded in the next couple of weeks uh, and, uh, and the support we expect to see for that position um, will come through and change policies and the process from, from there on through to, to, uh, to see that become a reality. Well, we've got a trans Tasman audience today and you just mentioned New Zealand. With a difference and so many employees across the different states in Australia, but also in New Zealand, how did the different restrictions and regulations impact your strategy? Uh, well, I think we've had a fairly, well, we are going to have a consistent approach. I mean, we have been conscious that, you know, different states are moving at different paces. The availability of vaccines are a key element of, of this discussion. So, uh, you know, we would like ultimately to land in a, a uniform position, both amongst all the states, but also across Tasman. Uh, and, and I think the, the key key activities in, in New Zealand are similar to in Australia. I mean, you know, we, we've surveyed our team over there. We think in excess of 80% of our, our team are, are fully vaccinated in New Zealand um, and over 90% of them uh, have had either two shots or one shot. So we expect ultimately the vast majority of our team over there will be, uh, will be fully vaccinated. And, and we just have had to sort of move at slightly different paces between the states and between New Zealand. But I think fundamentally, the final outcomes will be similar between both countries. Yes, and we're looking forward to having a stable relationship again and open the border. Do you view rapid antigen tests and proper vaccination clinics as a fixture in the near future at your branches and workplaces? Very much so. We're, we're participating in a trial at the moment among, in our branch network around rapid antigen testing, and we expect that will be a feature feature of a post-pandemic post world or um, post, you know, the, the easing of restrictions. And I spent a lot of time talking to our reinsurance partners around the world and they've got global workforces and in many cases well ahead of Australia in terms of dealing with some of these issues and rapid antigen testing is critical to it. And so that trial will help inform us uh, the best way to do, to do that. Um, we're also very lucky, as I mentioned before, in Brisbane, we, are a building, we have a new building uh, partner with Mervac It'll be the first post-pandemic workplace, uh, certainly in, in Queensland, certainly in, in the Brisbane CBD. 
And so that will give us a great opportunity to think about, um, you know, how do we uh, design that building more around collaboration than around traditional workspaces. Um, there'll be facilities there for us ultimately to do vaccines on site, vaccinations on site. Uh, and there will, be, there will be an ability for us to retrofit the building to make sure that if we do need to have some form of testing, uh, you know, embedded in the way we think about things into the future, we will be able to do that. So we're in a very, very good position, both with our physical real estate, uh, but also, um, you know, our ability to adapt over time as we, uh, as, as, as this will inevitably change. You mentioned adapting. I've read in your annual report that flexible workforce boosts disaster response. Do you want to share a little bit more, a little bit more about that, like how COVID has really boosted that? Yeah, look, we at Suncorp um, for probably a decade or more uh, have been practicing flexible work arrangements, and uh, we were one of the first corporates in in Australia to be able to enable our desktop work environment to be able to work remotely uh, back in 2011, 2012. So that's been embedded in the way we've worked for many years. In fact, going into COVID, we probably had an arrangement where you know we'd have eight desks for every ten people. Uh, and so there was sort of 20% of our workplace was in some uh, way, shape or form working remotely uh, pre-COVID. Now, COVID has changed so many things about the way we think about business, but most importantly, the way people want to work and they choose to work. Um, so the key elements for us will be to embed that collaborative workplace environment, to make the workspaces that we work in more collaborative, more meeting rooms, more areas for people to come together. Our expectation is there will be a requirement for all of our people, uh, or very much the vast majority of our people to come into the workplace on, on a reasonably regular basis. We think it's important for collaboration, teamwork, for development planning, for onboarding, a range of things need to be done in the office. So we will have people in the office, but it will be a substantially different footprint than it was before and probably closer to 10 for five or 10 for four. So that's 10 people for every four or five desks across our whole real estate footprint. Uh, we are very conscious of our requirement and responsibility to help repopulate the CBDs. I think uh, it's very important to get people back into workplaces in CBDs because they are, the, in many cases, a social fabric of, of our states uh, and territories. So um, we, we, we think things will change. Um, we're well placed to do that. Our technology enables us to do that. And our people will, will be demanding of a different way of working post-COVID than it was pre-COVID. It's unbelievable to see like how much of, of at the forefront you were already, like you mentioned, 2012. It's unbelievable. You also mentioned future. So if we look ahead, what dangers will we face if we don't address some of the challenges of the present, present business environment? For example, retaining talent in terms of labor shortages, pursuing ESG excellence, building purpose-led organizations. Yeah, I think if you had a close look at our annual reports over the last few years, and certainly uh, the things that I've been talking about as a leader within Suncorp, um, purpose is right at the top of, of our value creation framework. Um, you know, pre, pre COVID, pre Royal Commission in Financial Services, I think, you know, there was an expectation that we delivered to exist, to, we uh, existed to deliver value for shareholders at almost the expense of everything else. Now, I think we've learned a lot of lessons over the past five to 10 years. And at Suncorp, we've put purpose right at the top of everything we do. Um, you know, doing well and doing good uh, in parallel, uh, delivering through our people for our customers. And if you do all of that correctly, then you will create shareholder value. So purpose is, is core of what we do. I mean, that's understandable given, you know, the way we step in and manage, you know, the, the, the key moments in people's lives when the water goes through the house and the flooding starts or when the cyclone rips the roof off the, off the house, you know, the call to the emergency services and then the call to Suncorp. And I have the great privilege uh, as a CEO of being able to take the keys back to people who've been displaced from their home and give them back to them, not only their keys and their house, but their life. And so, you know, I, I firmly believe that, you know, and, I, and this is this is borne out globally that the most successful organisations are those that are digitised, they're using data well, um, and they're delivering for their customers, but they're guided by purpose. And I think purpose, ESG, um, and the dimensions of a, of a well-rounded business, delivering for the community, um, delivering for customers, I think they're the dimensions that, uh, that will differentiate um, you know, organisations into the future. And that's even more amplified now 
uh, through COVID. People are looking for different ways of working, things to inspire them, to reinvigorate them. They've reassessed the way they think psychologically, behaviourally around their lives. Um, Organisations need to give more and deeper meaning to that, to that aspiration. What do you look for in leaders in this new world? I look for all of that stuff, to be honest. I look for um, leaders who can inspire people, um, that they can innovate, um, that they're authentic and that they're grounded and, and they understand what the purpose of the organisation is and they execute to that day in, day out. Because I've often said that, you know, you can have an imprecise strategy. Um, you can not operate necessarily effectively in some of the things you do. But if every single person in the organisation walks in the door and they live the purpose of the organisation, they walk out the door, the organisation in totality will be successful. So I look for those sorts of things in leaders. And, um, and, and again, you know, they, they you know, I, 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 the assumption of all leaders is that they've got the capability to do the job. It's that, you know, being driven by purpose, community, customer, um, that uh, I think is the differentiator for good and, you know, less good leaders. Thank you. And my last question, and back to you as a leader, have the past 18 months made you a different CEO? Oh, no doubt. I don't think anyone has participated in this, uh, in this circle activity or that you talk to um, would have ever anticipated what we would go through. And I think, um, you know, the case study of COVID is being written and, and will be looked on, you know, as as um, as university students, we used to look back at how things changed through, you know, uh, industrial revolutions, technology revolutions, world wars, uh, you know, the next generation of MBA students and, and, and historians will be looking back at how business leaders adapted to COVID. And there's no doubt in the world that um, we think completely differently post COVID than we did pre-COVID. And there's a number of people, I think, who still believe that everything's just going to go back to the way it was. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think COVID has got some significant disru economic disruption, behavioural disruption, societal disruption, psychological disruption. Uh, and the good leaders of the future are going to be the ones that understand those dimensions, but can move with the change and adapt to the change. So I'm certainly a completely different individual uh, but also leader um, where we are today relative to what I was when I when I went into COVID. Well, on that amazing inspirational note, thank you so much, Steve. It was really an honour to spend the last 20 minutes or so with you and I'm going to formally hand over to Madison to close the session. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Cerise. Thank you, Cerise and Steve. It was wonderful to hear your thoughts on how Suncorp is supporting the vaccine rollout. And it was great hearing about the five principles that you applied right back at the start um, of, co of COVID and to keep your workplace safe. Your workplace was definitely at the head of the game and right at the forefront with initiating the flexible workplace environment back in 2012. It was great to hear about that. And I want to thank everyone at home for joining us today. On behalf of the circle, thank you, Steve, for your contribution your contribution to our Let's Get On With The Jab series. We're delighted that you were able to join us for our last Facts Pop of Twitter series. We've heard from many inspiring leaders in the last seven weeks, all of, all of which providing us with their thoughtful and driven plans and initiatives in rolling out the vaccine in their workplace. A lot has changed within this time and as we reach easing of restrictions and a new walk in life, we are all excited to see what the future holds. Thank you again for joining in and becoming part of the movement. Our webinars are streamed live and published for later viewing on our social channels. For now though, I'll hand back to Steve for the final word and for a closing comment. Thank you. Thank you very much to the Trans-Tasman Business Circle, the Circle Program, and uh, I think it's been a very helpful um, dialogue that's been established over the last little while, starting with Alan Joyce um, around this particular topic. Also like to thank Verant, um, Kevin particularly, and the great relationship that Suncorp has with Verant, um, the alignment of our cultures and alignment of our aspiration and purpose and uh, I wish everyone all the best uh, I th think some of the tougher times are still ahead of us unfortunately as the restrictions unfold and and the borders open up uh, which is going to be a great thing for all of us but still leaves some challenges in front so I wish everyone the best in navigating the uncertainties and coming out the other side in even stronger shape thank you